that there will be a revival in Israel. There will be a restoration in Israel. And he's saying, and they also will now have their names written in the Lamb's book of life. Meaning, there is a day coming when they also will accept Christ the Messiah as the Messiah. And they will be saved. It's like that. When that day comes, their names will be in the book of life. That day, if you read the book of Zechariah, that day is promised. He promises in Zechariah chapter 3 when he says that in one day he'll wipe out, take away the sin of Israel. That day is promised in the book of Romans chapter 11. Romans chapter 11, 25, he says, when the fullness of the number of the Gentiles has arrived, meaning the church has been taken. Then verse 26, then all Israel will be saved. Okay, now you have to be careful with all Israel. Because you know too well that two thirds will be slaughtered. But he's saying that God will redeem Israel. God will restore Israel. That's what he's saying there. How are we together? That a day is coming when well, now finally he's going to rescue Israel and their names will be in the Lamb's book of life. So he's saying here very powerfully, he's saying, but at that time, anyone whose name is found written in the book, that's the book of life, will be delivered. He's promising deliverance. He's saying, again, look at me now. He's saying, however terrible, that great tribulation will be. However horrific that great tribulation will be. Terrible. Horrific. Bloody. Unbearable. Unthinkable. Unimaginable. Slaughter and everything. Bloodshed. Blood being poured. He's saying, however terrible that day will be. He's saying, God will save Israel. Hallelujah. And that tells you that even this thing that is looming right now in the news, they are going to prevail. Oh yes. They are going to prevail. Because he says, then also, he has a plan to rescue Israel, to fight for Israel. You know too well in Zechariah chapter 12, verse 10, when they will mourn like one mourns over a firstborn son. When they will see the one they are pierced finally coming to redeem them. They will mourn. But this prophecy on the rapture of the dead church, of the dead, of the church asleep, of those who have died before rapture is very powerful and very rich. Hallelujah. I'm simply teaching you how to read Bible when you go to teach your countries. Because time is over. The devil will not teach them the word. Only you will teach them the word. Hallelujah. And there's no other time for teaching the word except now. Right? And he says, Everyone whose name is found written in the book of life, the book, will be delivered. And then verse 2, verse 2 now he comes to that same vision. Verse 2 he says, he says, multitudes who sleep in the dust of the earth will awake. Now he calls sleep, he calls death what? Sleep. Hallelujah. Because he knows they are going to be woken up. They are going to be woken up. Hallelujah. He says, again verse 2, multitudes who sleep in the dust of the earth will awake, some to everlasting life and others to everlasting contempt, to shame and everlasting contempt. Again verse 2, multitudes who sleep in the dust of the earth will awake, 
some to everlasting life and others to shame and everlasting contempt. God is saying that there are two resurrections. The Lord is saying that there are two resurrections. That there is the first resurrection and the second resurrection. And when Daniel is looking at this vision, he sees the two as if they are happening at the same time. But when the rapture is near and the Lord has now sent us to come and speak to the church globally, then he now shows us the resurrection that are resurrected for everlasting life. Are we together now? Now he shows us the first resurrection. One resurrection alone first. The first one. Quando uh, Avenida de Cristo rapture, I don't know, you know, in Portuguese, they say rapatamento. When the rapture is near, cuando the rapture es cerca, el monstruo a nosotros, solamente primera resurrección. Resucitación or resurrection, whichever the case. Resurrection. Hi. In the message of the rapture, of the church that died before rapture. In that message, in that vision, when you now open up the instruction of God, you hear him saying that there are two resurrections. And God Almighty is saying that you like it or not, you like it or not, there is a real heaven. There's a real place called heaven and people will be resurrected and they will go into a real heaven and stay there. There is a real heaven. You like it or not, he says, let these people in this generation stop joking around. He's saying there's a real heaven where people will go and enjoy everlasting life. Hallelujah. Oh yes. He said there is a real place called heaven and people will go to that place and they will enter there and they will get eternal life and they will enjoy it and they will celebrate eternally in the presence of God. A real place. It must happen. It must happen. He said it must happen. There is a real place. He's saying the way this generation is joking around, go and tell them there is a real place called heaven. God himself has testified that, look them on, it is a real place and there are only two destinations. There is no third one. There is no third one. Did you understand? Can you sit down please? Did you understand what the Lord is saying here? In the vision of the rapture. My daughter, me, I'm glad you came from South Africa. I'm glad you came to hear this. So you can go and teach it. So that they enter. So on that day when they're looking at the nations which have gathered, they see South Africa has gathered. They see South Africa has gathered also. On that day. Yeah. This is the time. And it's amazing, really. It's amazing to even think that the Lord can choose you and put you on such a noble, most powerful agenda of heaven, doing it on his behalf. That is unbelievable that he has chosen you to begin to do things on behalf of God the Father on this earth and prepare people for that place. It's unthinkable. Because you're like, just a moment, I'm just an ordinary person. How did he choose me? But wait a moment. Wait a moment. You'll see what God does with just ordinary people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's why I said, we have so much to cover. This is just, into, oh, well, I always introduction. But, I mean, this is it now, but we are moving slow, slowly. What we have is so much. At one point, she has to read the Bible for me. So we can cover this. So when you come here, you get that which I don't say elsewhere. You get deeper and more extensive and intensive also. 
Hallelujah. He's saying in the message of the rapture of the church of those who have fallen asleep, those who have died before rapture. He says that just a moment, run to these people and tell them there is a real place called heaven and real people will resurrect and enter the real place and enjoy a real eternal life. Real. It is not a story. 